In this video, we will first illustrate the principle of the ANCOVAR, the analysis of covariance, by using Excel and a limited data set. And then later we will use Minitab for a more complex analysis. Starting with Excel, the graph shows the percentage transmission as a function of wavelength for two inks, A and B. And we wish to test whether there is a difference in transmission between these two inks. The transmission values are given in column C in rows 3 to 5 for ink A and rows 6 to 9 for ink B. To start with, we can perform a two sample t test to see if there is a significant difference between the median values of these raw transmission values. So in C11, we will enter the request for the t test function, which will requires the two data arrays, the number of tails, so we have a two-tailed test, and we will assume equal variance, so we will enter two in this position in the argument, and we will get a p-value of 0.432. In this case, the test has been unable to detect a significant difference in transmission because both samples include a large variation between the values due to the differences in wavelength. And the t-test interprets this large variation as purely random variations in the data. And in this test, the difference in transmission values between the inks is too small to be detected when compared to this covariate variation due to the wavelength. However, we can see from the graph that ink A does appear to have higher transmission values than ink B. And we can now detect this difference by correcting for the covariate variation of transmission with wavelength. First of all, we derive the best fit straight line through this data. And in this simple example, we will include all the data values together. So we will calculate the slope of the best fit line in G4. So that's equals slope and the known y values and the known x values, which are the wavelength. Similarly, we can calculate the intercept for this best fit straight line. And this best fit straight line can then be drawn as the trend line in this data, in which we can see that the A values are generally above the trend line and the B values are generally below. So to quantify this difference, we will calculate the best fit values corresponding to each measurement. And to do this, we will use the equation of the straight line. So the best fit value for transmittance at a wavelength of 698 is equal to the slope of the best fit straight line multiplied by the value of the wavelength and then plus the intercept value, giving a value of 43.98. We will copy this equation to the other cells, but to do that we must lock the row values of the slope and the intercept by putting dollar signs in front. Copying this calculation down, we get all of the best fit values for each of these wavelengths. We can then measure the value of the residual between the experimental value and the best fit value at that wavelength, which is quite simply equal to the difference between the measured value and the best fit value, giving a residual of 3.18 for the first of the A data points. Copying that formula down, we can now carry out a two sample t test to test for a significant difference in these residuals. Sample A, sample B. Again, it's two tailed, and we assume equal variance, giving a p value of 0 0.001 for the difference between the residuals. So this now shows a significant difference between the two inks. And so by correcting for the variation due to the wavelength, the residuals now show a significant difference between the two inks. 
we can now use a mini tab to perform an, a similar Ankovar analysis for the difference between three inks. We can now illustrate the use of Minitab in performing an Ankovar analysis. In this data, we have the percentage transmission from three inks A, B and C recorded using a spectrophotometer over a range of wavelengths. The aim of the analysis is to see if there is any difference between the transmission of the three inks, but in this analysis, the transmission also varies linearly with wavelength for all three inks. So wavelength is now a covariate. And we perform this ANCOVAR analysis by going to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model, the response is a percentage transmission. The model is that we are trying to identify any differences between the three inks. And we can identify the covariate as being the wavelength. And in anticipation of identifying a possible difference between the three inks, we will analyze for comparisons and we can choose either pairwise comparison between the three inks or comparison with a control. But in this analysis, we don't have a specific control ink, so we retain the default pairwise comparisons. And under terms, we wish to identify differences between the different inks. And we can select one of the post hoc tests and we will use the default two key test. In addition to grouping information, we would also request confidence interval information and run the analysis. Okay. The results appear in the session window in which we see the standard ANOVAR table which measures the significance of the different factors in the analysis. We can see that the wavelength is very significant with a p-value of less than 0 0.0005, which is not surprising because we knew that wavelength was a covariate in this analysis. But we can see, again, a very significant p-value for the ink factor. So this analysis tells us that there is a significant difference between at least two of the inks. Looking elsewhere in these results, we see that we have the coefficients, the constant and the slope of the best fit straight line between the percentage transmission and the wavelength, which tells us that over the three inks, the best fit straight line is that the percentage transmission is equal to a constant minus 567 plus the slope of 0 0.87455 times the wavelength. Looking at other information within the results, we see here some results from the comparison analysis using the Tukey method. The three inks with mean values, but also being allocated different groups. Ink A has been allocated into group A, whereas B and C are both allocated into group B. And the interpretation of this information is that these mean values of the inks are significantly different if they do not share a group letter. So A and B are in different groups, so their mean values are significantly different. So A is significantly different from B, and A is also significantly different from C. But B and C are not significantly different. We can see the same information if we look at the confidence intervals. In these diagrams here, the range between the brackets represents confidence intervals. 
And so, for example, if we look at this lower one, this confidence interval between about minus 2 and about plus 0.3 represents the difference between ink B and ink C. But this confidence interval does include the possibility that the difference between B and C could be zero. And if the difference between B and C could be zero, then we cannot be confident that they are actually different. So the fact that this confidence interval overlaps the zero means that we cannot say that B and C are significantly different. However, if we look at the difference between A and B, then that is between about minus 6 and about minus 4, which certainly does not include 0. So we can be confident that the difference between B and A is not 0. There is a significant difference. Similarly, there is a significant difference between A and C. So this confidence interval information confirms significant differences between A and B and A and C, but not between B and C.